All right, guys, what's going on today? We're back in the kitchen again, and I was inspired to make something I saw recently on YouTube. I saw a video by Exercise for Cheat Meals who reviewed Ethan Harold's Cosmic Brownie, Anabolic Cosmic Brownie, excuse me, um, recipe. And it got me thinking, I was like, wait, I make something that I would call a brownie almost every single day. Now, I usually take this, I make it in a, in a coffee cup, a coffee mug, or a small glass, whatever. Um, and I just make like a basically one third of the size of this or maybe even a little less uh, and I throw it into one of my ice cream recipes whether that's the Greek yogurt and cottage cheese just kind of whip it up whatever ice cream or if I really get all into it and make you know nice cream or anabolic ice cream whatever you want to call it, a big shake basically a thick like ice cream like shake um, it adds a ton of texture ton of flavor ton of richness and it's just really really pleasant to eat um, if you like you know brownies and ice cream so the other way to do this would be to make the ice cream, make the brownie separate, make the brownie the size that I am, and then kind of have a brownie a la mode, if you will, if you want to get fancy, if you want to impress somebody, maybe you got a date coming over, maybe you're just like, hey, let's hit a lift, and then I'm going to impress you with my kitchen when we get back, we're going to get that protein in. No divine protein shakes, anyway. Anyway, so let's get started. First ingredient, shouldn't come as much of a surprise to anyone. We're going to be throwing in some PB2, uh, PB Fit, whatever you want. Normally, I use the Walmart brand, but today, wow, today we got brand name, organic. Crazy. We're going to go in with 40 grams of this. That is five tablespoons for those of you keeping track at home. Oh, come on. Boom. Oh, oh, yeah. All right, next ingredient, we're gonna add some Splenda. Now, I think this recipe would taste better if you have the Swerve Confectioner's sugar. I do not. Uh, the consistency is a little bit better with it, um, but I have Splenda on hand, so it's what I'm using. It tastes just fine, but again, Confectioner's sugar definitely helps with the consistency just a touch. Um, also, since that's erythritol, erythritol, these have like, uh, I think it's two calories per packet or one and a half calories per packet or something like that. Erythritol, I think, is a true zero calorie sweetener. So, whoop de doo you're going to save a couple calories. I use four packets. You can use as many or as few as you want. I don't like things overwhelmingly sweet. Uh, so, you know, your mileage may vary. I'm going to go with four. And what's included in my macros is four packets, actually four packets, about 13 calories. So you're looking at about three calories per packet. Next ingredient shouldn't come as a surprise either. We're gonna use a little bit of baking powder. I don't really measure it. I, I sprinkle it, but today we're gonna do a little bit of measuring. We're gonna do about half a teaspoon. A little bit more than that. There we go. About half a teaspoon of baking powder. Um, again, it's gonna depend how much you want it to set up. You put too much, it'll be a rock. Not enough, and it won't it won't uh, rise at all, which is also fine. But I like a little bit of poof to it because again, we are making we're pretty much making brownies here, guys. It's really what this is is a lower calorie brownie. Now the next ingredient we're we're really getting down to the wire here. We're gonna just use some some cocoa powder. Now, I'm using regular good old Hershey's cocoa powder, but this is mixed. I actually mix the regular cocoa powder and special dark cocoa powder sometimes. I'm a big fan of dark chocolate, so usually when I make this, I actually have another container of just special dark cocoa powder, which is in this nice empty BCAA, or EAA, excuse me, EAA uh, can. So I like dark chocolate type stuff. So anyway, we're gonna go in with about 10 tablespoons of this, which is, sounds like a lot, but it's not. It's only 50 grams, okay? So we use 40 grams of the PB2, PB Fit, whatever you want to call it. We use 50 grams of cocoa powder. So in my opinion, when it comes to coloring, if you're really trying to mimic a cosmic brownie, special dark cocoa powder will give you a much darker appearance uh, and you'll mimic that cosmic brownie color a little bit better. Um, our last ingredient here, or at least dry ingredient, is going to be some salt. So you use some sea salt, just a, 
a healthy little sprinkle. And that's, that's it. Now we're gonna go in with a nice dry mix here, just to kinda get everything incorporated before we start actually creating our batter. Um, especially the salt and baking powder, you want that to get. Oh, and you can use baking soda as well. Um, in case that wasn't obvious, you can use really whichever one you want. There we go, so that's that's blended good enough. And now, the liquid that we're gonna use is water. Crazy, I know. So, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a glass and we'll get right into it. So I'm gonna be using this blender bottle just so I can kind of measure how much I end up actually putting in. I've got 10 ounces in here. Um, I don't usually really measure it because generally all you wanna do is add it a little bit at a time um, and then go ahead and mix so it doesn't slosh too much because the cocoa powder takes a little bit to actually incorporate uh, and then you'll eventually just be left with a, a nice cake batter consistency that's really all you're going for some people when they make these brownies will actually put uh, protein powder in their dry mix here in their actual brownie mix and we're not going to do that now just bear with me here now, normally I eat this, like I said, with ice cream. But today, we're actually going to be making some frosting for these brownies. And that is where we are going to incorporate our protein powder. So, you can kind of do it either way. This is kind of the recipe that I would eat if I'm just gonna make these on their own. But I don't really do that. I'll make a batch of this and then plop it in the fridge and every day I, just like regular brownies, cut a brownie, throw it in my ice cream, and bada bing, bada boom, it's good to go. Now, another thing is that this, is, this recipe is pretty high in fiber, so this is actually gonna be pretty good if you're dieting, but if you're trying to pack in a bunch of calories, it won't be quite as good, but I mean, then you could always just, you know, use real peanut butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this, and I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. All right, so we're left with this nice batter. It's pretty, pretty loose consistency, kind of like a jello pudding, basically. Um, not too watery. At the end of the day, if you make it too watery, it's not that bad because we're gonna cook the water out anyway. So I'm gonna hit just this nice oven safe baking dish with just a little spritz of uh, some olive oil spray. I didn't include it in the macros. We can assume five calories, that's fine. Um, and then I've got my handy dandy spatula here as well. And we're just gonna go ahead and dish this out. Again, what we're basically doing here is a cake. That's what most of these anabolic recipes are and why I kind of think it's a silly thing to say because it's like, all right, yeah, I made a normal recipe and just used all low fat, no fat, and then added a scoop of protein powder. But, nonetheless, it surprises me sometimes when people don't know what, like, brownies are made out of, which is this, aka what dreams are made out of, let's be honest. So we're going to go ahead and got to drop the load. Oh, yeah, that, that's just beautifully incorporated. No clumps. Don't want clumps. Again, I don't know if y'all did some baking with your mom when you were a kid. I did, no shame. I love baking, but I learned everything I know from her, so thanks, mom. And my grandma, my grandma too. They had all these family recipes. Everyone made their certain cookies and brownies and whatever at the holiday parties. Nowadays, I could do all the cooking and baking for the holiday parties and my entire extended family would be fucking jacked. Just kidding. Anyway. And now, go ahead and just kind of even it out a little bit. It actually evens out its own, on its own pretty, pretty darn well. Scrape all this back in there. You don't want to waste a drop of this, believe me. Now this is the stage, I'm going for cosmic brownies. So we're gonna use some rainbow sprinkles as a topping. This would be a good time to add some chocolate chips and just kind of press them in gently, in my opinion. I think it would taste just as good if not better so quick disclaimer if you're going to take this out and expect it to exactly mimic a cosmic brownie or you compare them side by side it's not quite going to do it what 
To me, what makes a Cosmic Brownie is that unparalleled like moisture that you get in a Cosmic Brownie, where it like, it's almost like greasy, if that makes sense, and it probably is. Uh, but they hold their moisture ridiculously well and it's just super rich, super chocolatey. That's what this is gonna give us. So the, the, the taste won't be identical, but it will be darn close in terms of mouthfeel, I guess. And I'm gonna go with satisfaction, that's gonna be the word. So, now we're gonna throw this in the oven, 350 for like five to seven minutes. My oven's hot as hell, I do like five minutes. You can also start it in the microwave, do like 30 seconds and then put it in the oven to finish it. You can do it all in the microwave. Be advised, uh, in the microwave, it will cook kind of unevenly, so it's best to do it in like 30 second increments. Let it sit for a few minutes, another 30 seconds to try and try and make it a little bit more even. So I'm gonna throw this in, and I'm gonna catch up with you guys to do the frosting. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same bowls we use for the batter, the same spoon, same spatula, because we're here to make gains, not dishes, okay? We're gonna pop open some protein. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screw this up. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm screwing it up. Use whey protein, chocolate whey protein, obviously, if you, you're trying to mimic the, the cosmic brownie. I'm gonna use casein. Doesn't work as well for frosting. If you wanna add it to the batter, casein works well, but not so great for the frosting. This is all I have right now, because I may have, may have destroyed the remainder of my chocolate protein. Uh, through consumption, of course. But anyway, it's gonna work fine. This will be fine. We're gonna go in with just 15 grams of this. They might be thinking, where, how, do, how do you get any protein out of this recipe, Jared? Like, where the hell is the protein? Well, we have 15 grams of casein. But the PB2, the PB fit, per serving, which is two tablespoons, you're looking at eight grams of protein. So that's four grams of protein per tablespoon. We used five tablespoons total. That's 20 grams of protein from the PB fit powder. Now, PB Fit, I don't think it's actually a complete protein because it is technically plant-based. Um, so that's why the casein kind of comes in handy here, uh, which is gonna provide us the full spectrum of amino acids. Um, obviously, the amino acids need to be in a certain ratio to be optimal, uh, but this will give us a few grams, let's, let's call it 15 grams of casein, let's call it 11 grams of complete protein, 20 grams of, of incomplete proteins. It's gonna be plenty of amino acids, guys. And then we're gonna go in with five grams of cocoa powder again. Now you don't need to use this. Again, my casein is not super chocolatey. This is the uh, My Protein Chocolate Smooth casein. Not a huge fan of it, honestly. It's like not chocolatey enough. Um, not a great taste, but same thing here, we're gonna do a quick dry mix. You can add another sugar packet if you want. I don't think it needs it. And then we're gonna throw a splash of water in here. And again, this is a unscientific amount, so I'll let you know how much we end up putting in, but really you just want a frosting consistency. I've used sugar-free Jello in the past to try to help the consistency. Not good, makes it way too like chunky. It's kind of gross. Uh, tastes great, but it just doesn't look very appealing and it does not spread very well. So the other thing is if you use whey protein, you're gonna need less water. It's not as thick. Kind of think of it like powdered milk, right? And when you put water in it, it seems to like get, get wetter. <laughs> like if you take like some dry oats and throw protein in it and mix it in, it's almost as if you added water. It's kind of strange, but um, if you know, you know, all right? But casein's not quite like that. So you do need a good little bit of water. And this is probably about good. So again, make sure there's no clumps. Don't be afraid of really over mixing. There really is no such thing. I'm just trying to make sure I scrape any and all dry little bits. There you go. That's our frosting. Now I'm gonna throw this in the freezer uh, while our brownie bakes. Um, so that's a little thicker when it comes out. Then we will let the brownie cool, frost it, throw it back in the fridge or freezer for whenever you want to enjoy it. So I will catch up with you guys in a second once we pull this sucker out. And I'm gonna show you guys what the finished product looks like. Maybe we'll do a live taste test. I may have already, well, 
Let's not spoil it. Let's do a live taste test. See you in a bit. All right, welcome back, guys. We have time traveled. This is done. Uh, quick disclaimer. I made two batches. The first batch I made I did in the microwave to speed things up. Started it for about 35 to 40 seconds and then threw it in the oven on 350. Took only a couple of minutes. This one took a little bit longer in the oven. At 350 it took about 13 minutes with no microwave. So just keep an eye on it. You'll know it's done when you get a nice little like kind of crust on the top. Just like again, just like normal brownies. Um, so basically just keep your oven light on, check on it every two or three minutes and you'll be good to go. I then threw it in the fridge, so we're nice and cooled down here, but now we're gonna go ahead and frost it. We're gonna throw our sprinkles on it, and I'll show you guys the finished product. So I kept the frosting in the freezer for a while, and then just kind of transferred it to the fridge so that it's nice and kind of thick. See how it just sticks to the spoon? It's, it's frosting. And we're just gonna go ahead and glop it on here. And then just like a cake, you're gonna frost it. There's really no secrets here, guys. Now, if you're really into making sure your brownies are cooked perfectly, use the toothpick trick. You got a toothpick laying around, or even a food thermometer. Toothpicks work better because they're, they're wooden. Um, you want to take, take your brownies out, poke a toothpick into the middle, and if nothing comes out on the toothpick, they're done. If you get anything on the toothpick, they need a little bit more time because usually the batter will then stick to it if it's not baked all the way. So. If you use a food thermometer or something else, it doesn't really work well because things don't stick to the metal as well as they would wood. It's not as great of an indicator. So again, do some baking with your mom and uh, your grandma and whoever else, and uh, you'll learn these things. Maybe maybe uh, share some recipes. You guys can get your family members freaking huge, get fucking jacked on uh, these brownies. Just kidding. I'm not. I'm not kidding. So, just like that, I mean, we're really not going to spend a lot of time making this perfect. It's just frosting. Second best part. Mmm. Mmm. Chef's kiss. Sprinkles. We're going to throw some sprinkles on top. I'm a big fan of putting chocolate chips in the batter, like I mentioned before letting them melt and stuff. But since we're doing cosmic brownie kind of style thing, we're gonna do sprinkles here. So we're gonna do... Now in, in the macros, I've budgeted uh, like 15 calories worth of sprinkles, which would be about three grams. So that's three grams of sprinkles. That's actually a surprising amount of sprinkles for 15 calories, not half bad. So here's our finished product. Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna throw this back into the fridge or freezer. Really doesn't matter which. Uh, it freezes and defrosts just fine. And then you can kind of cut them up and serve them however. I like the frosting to be kind of frozen, to be cooled down, to be chilled, uh, so that it's thicker, it's stickier, more like a cosmic brownie. The cosmic brownie frosting is like fused onto it, but you can eat it like this where the frosting is uh, loose. Now, fortunately, I have one I made earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and cut a piece out and do a taste test. Spoiler alert, already tried one. Incredible. So. Go ahead and cut it. Oh yeah. I'm gonna bring you guys in close here so you can see this. All right guys, here it is. Now look at the sides of this thing. Look at this thing. Look at how dense this sucker is. Oh, look at how, look at the fudge. Oh man, this is gonna be good. So let's, let's Let's break a piece off, right? You see the cheese pull on all these other things. Here you can see like the frosting layer and everything. This isn't quite a cheese pull, but... Oh yeah. Oh baby. It's, it's so... It's like crazy moist. Like, I know people don't like that word. Too bad. So moist. It's, it's surprisingly moist. And it's because of the PB2. 
BB2 makes it so you don't have to use flour and it holds like this creaminess, uh, which is awesome. Oh, just delicious, fudgy. Let me see if I can get a good shot of like the layers. All right, so this is about the best I'm gonna be able to get. It's tough to get it to focus on it, but you can like see the layers. It's a little messy. So worth it, guys. How I normally eat this is I literally just take it. I don't frost it usually, but I just crumble it up. Where's a good shot of the layers? But I just crumble it up and put it in anabolic ice cream or nice cream or whatever you call it. And it, oh man, brownie chunks and ice cream, like name a better combo. Oh. The contrast of frosting, the brownie, is there. I'm gonna use it again. It's moist, it's chocolatey, it's smooth, it's delicious. Um, does it taste like a cosmic brownie? Not quite. Is it better than Ethan Harold's? In my opinion, yes. Feel free to disagree, I've made both. They're both good. This is delicious. So, last but not least, I'm gonna throw you guys back uh, a little less zoomed in and we're gonna go over the macros real quick. All right guys, so, the recipe I just made, which is five tablespoons PB Fit, 11 total tablespoons of coconut powder, coconut powder, cocoa powder, uh, four Splendas, a little bit of baking powder, 15 grams of casein, and the sprinkles. I know I said I used 15 calories worth of sprinkles. I actually used 20 in this, in, in my calculation, uh, just because I wasn't sure. You know, some people like more sprinkles, some people like less. So for 20 calories, you would be looking at uh, four grams of sprinkles, right? You get an extra gram of sprinkles. Again, it's a lot. So this gives you 10.7 fat, 53.3 carb, 36.6 protein, where about a third of that is complete proteins from casein, which is gonna hold you even longer. 28 grams of fiber from the cocoa powder too. So guys, give this a shot. I'm telling you these are delicious. You could make these. For normal people, I'm a big fan of healthy recipes that normal people won't take a bite out of and be like, wow, that's that's disgusting. I'll take my full fat, full leaded, please. Give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time.